Okay, so then the last thing we're going to do with this plugin is to do the same thing with the next gen gallery. And by this point, you'll probably know exactly how we're going to accomplish that. But if we come back over here and say use a common plugin, and instead of add sh slideshow, we're going to add the next gen gallery slideshow. And we hit save and refresh it. Nothing is going to show, and the reason nothing is going to show is because we haven't yet given it, we haven't said what ID we wanted to use for the next gen gallery slideshow. And so I've got this section down here insert the next gen gallery ID, and then we can specify its width and its height. So at the moment, we got to go find the next gen gallery ID, and you're going to find that under the gallery. So let's just select this. I only have one gallery, and it's going to be gallery one, obviously. If we take a look at this, yep. Yeah. I have one gallery, and these images are all 600 by 250 pixels. So my ID is one. All right, my, that's my picture ID, but my. That's interesting. Let's see. Overview. Well, I guess it's not going to, I guess we need more galleries for it to tell me how many, what my gallery IDs are, but we're just going to grab, since I've only got one gallery, it's going to be gallery ID one. So if we come back over to the plugin settings and simple feature box and use our common plugin and insert one. Hit save. Refresh it. So notice how even though the images themselves that I showed you said they were 600 by 250, that the image itself is showing at this smaller size. That is the default behavior of a next-gen gallery display. And what it does is essentially shows you the thumbnail view of the image which is why we have this height and width setting next gen gallery width and height because now we can make it show the images at the full height full size rather than at its smaller size so if we hit save again and hit refresh again okay there we have it now we have this um, sitting in there again with the very same style that we had before. So we've got the same drop shadow and the same white outline. We could go ahead and get rid of that. Um, well, in the first place, we could give ourselves a cool purple shadow. And we could entirely eliminate that outline. like that. We can also opt to do the borders around this each side uh, differently. So for example, if we come over to our border, we can check allow each side of the border to be different and hit save. Now when we go to borders we have a choice of of uh, which borders we want to use. So we could say top border height is or top border width is one and pick our blue background color and make it solid and then we can have our right border be one use that same color and make it solid and then we could say no bottom border and no left border and hit save for example oh I should have said I'm sorry I made it the right border was blue but I should have made the left border blue but you can use that feature to do just about anything you want with the borders they don't all have to be exactly the same 
Uh, so you could put, you know, a lighter border here and a darker border there, or you could put a lighter border here, and, or a narrow, thinner border here and a wider border there. So, for example, let's just do that. Um, let's go ahead and have uh, the solid, and it'll be one pixel, and then one pixel solid. But on the left border, let's make the left border three pixels. And let's make the top border three pixels. And hit save. Come over and take a look at it. And I can see it. All right, we've got a bigger border on the left, the top and the left, and a thinner border on the bottom and on the right. And um, you can use that probably more profitably on widgets in order to make them stand out a little bit more if you want. But anyway, you, ha you do have complete control over that. And we could quite easily, we're going to make each border the same. But we could make each border five pixels and that blue color and solid make our drop shadow back to a gray and have something stand out like that so anyway okay well that pretty much wraps up how to use the latest version of the thesis simple feature box plugin